How your school year goes is ultimately up to you. Sure, there are outside sources that can press in and make it tougher to navigate, but if you want to ruin your school year, that's on you. Stick around, let's talk about it. If we're honest, when things go wrong, we usually blame someone else, don't we? And sometimes it, it does fall on someone else when your day goes bad. One day, Katie and I were driving home from church with our boys and some guy came flying out of a parking lot after he got into a bar fight and he <laughs> plowed into us head on. Fortunately, no one got seriously hurt, but our car was totaled. No fault of our own, someone else blew it for us. There are always going to be days, maybe even especially at school, when someone else's actions impact your day and not in the way you were hoping for. We're not really talking about that today. What we're talking about today is a way that you can be your own ruining of a day. Part of following Jesus is multiplying your life, being someone who makes an impact for good. When have you intentionally gone about investing in someone else? Most of us don't think about it unless we're being invited to volunteer in a thing. But there's a story in scripture that walks us through what it looks like to ruin a perfect opportunity to multiply our lives. And while we don't know if this guy was headed off to third period or not, it still applies. So let's take a look. Matthew 19 verses 16 through 21. Matthew's the first book in the New Testament. It's part of what we call the Gospels. So if you're leafing through a paper Bible, it's probably going to be about two thirds or so of the way through. Just then, a man came to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. But if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false, te false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give to the poor, and then you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. So if you've been around church much, you've probably heard this story referred to as the rich young ruler. And honestly, there's a lot to focus on here. In fact, Jesus, right after the part we just read, starts going hard after the rich part of the story. But I don't, I don't want to lean into that part today. That's a story for another day. I want to break down how this guy ruined his own school year, how he started with good intentions and quickly subverted his own plan, and how sometimes we do the exact same thing. So first, let's just acknowledge, the only thing we might have in common with this guy is age. Most of us aren't rich and most of us aren't rulers, but the young thing, at least some of us, we can relate. This guy was probably about the age of some of your older siblings. People who are smarter about the Bible than me say he was probably maybe in his early 20s. We don't really know, but that's a good guess. So we know that he was pretty young, not a teenager, but close, and he had means. Wealth was in his wheelhouse, probably one mowing lawns for a few extra bucks on the weekend. And he was a ruler, I meaning he had some sort of administrative authority. So not necessarily a king or a politician kind of ruler, but someone who was in charge of a lot of other people, places, or things. Some people write this guy off from the start. He was young, rich, and in charge. Surely he was a jerk. Some of us even think he was baiting Jesus, trying to get the answer he wanted to get. But I'm not so sure. Let's break it down. Verse 16. Just then, a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? See, I, I think this guy might have been ready to multiply himself. First, he was on the lookout for Jesus. Jesus didn't go to him. He went to Jesus. And actually, I think this guy was a, a lot like some of us in that way. We're like leaning into what Jesus might want from us. We're asking him what he wants us to do and who he wants us to be. That's where this guy started too. And not only that, 
He was thinking about more than just today. He wanted to know what kind of investment he could make that would matter for eternity. He wasn't looking for a feel good, don't impact my schedule too much kind of one-time service project. What good thing will push me toward eternal life? He was thinking way down the line. So you wanna run your school year? Job number one is don't think about anything or anyone but yourself. Multiplying your life means you're seeking out opportunities to do good things. But more than that, good things with eternity in mind with Jesus as the author and finisher of those things. So this guy started strong, and I choose to believe this guy was probably pretty aware of his privilege, which prompted him to start seeking ways to multiply for others. So what went wrong? What happened? In verses 17 through 19, Jesus engages this guy, this guy's question pretty head on. Jesus tells him he's got to keep the commandments, and he enumerates some of the big ones. And how does this guy respond? Spoiler, this is where it starts going downhill. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? This answer reveals so much about our boy. Some think that his answer shows that he was never truly interested in the answer. He was just so quick to tell Jesus he already hit all the markers. He, he must not have truly wanted the answer to begin with. Some just say he's a general idiot. Like, who among us thinks we've kept all the commandments? At the very least, some say he was just super self-unaware. And both of those assessments might very well be true. What if there's something else at play here, though? What if this guy was expecting something so much more complicated? What if the answer just took <gasps> him by surprise? Or, I mean, he was pretty young. What if his life experience just kind of put him on autopilot thinking, nah, it definitely can't be this easy. See, I think this answer reveals something much more about the core of this guy. And I think it's something that a lot of us struggle with. He wasn't coachable. He asked Jesus for coaching, for direction, for advice on how to multiply his life. And when Jesus gave it to him, he balked, he paused, he justified, he, he jumped to a quick conclusion. He didn't truly listen. He didn't ask follow-up questions. He didn't ask his buddies if they thought he'd been keeping all those commandments. To invest in others, you have to listen to whoever is investing in you. You multiply your life by learning from those who are leading you. So if you wanna ruin your school year, don't be coachable. Don't trust those people who are leading you. And whatever you do, don't listen. So this guy is kind of behind an eight ball now. He went in with good motives, but he wasn't really willing to lean into the counsel he was getting. And here's the sad part. The initial input from Jesus was pretty simple. Simple enough that this guy immediately thought he had it on lock. So when it got more serious, bro, he definitely was not ready. Verses 21 and 22. Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, Go, sell all your possessions and give to the poor, and then you'll have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he was sad because he had great wealth. You want to ruin your school year? You want to fail miserably at multiplying your life, investing in others, going beyond yourself? Then for sure, don't sacrifice anything ever. Dude did what we all do. He asked Jesus to help us, guide us, lead us. We hit autopilot pretty quick and then he asked us to do something super hard and we did. Like, nope, too much, too big, too inconvenient, too not what we are expecting, Jesus. So we just say no. We aren't willing to sacrifice. We don't want to sacrifice even the small stuff. So we sure don't want to sacrifice the big stuff. Multiplying our lives, investing in God's kingdom, make no mistake, it requires sacrifice and lots of us aren't rich so let's drop the money thing for a minute this guy had great wealth and he didn't want to sacrifice it what's something you would struggle with sacrificing even if jesus was coaching you prompting you to do it in order to make a bigger kingdom impact let me help you think some of you are freaking football track baseball volleyball fill in the blank with your sport of choice legends and if Jesus asked you to lay that down, even for eternal impact, would you go away sad? Some of you, it's a significant other. You'd rather ignore the coaching of Jesus than let go. 
of him or her. It's your job, it's the school play, it's your grades. If Jesus coached you to drop a thing because he wanted you to multiply your kingdom influence, would you? Or would you just go away sad? Now catch this. The whole sacrifice the thing you love most and have most of in this world thing, that was the second thing Jesus coached our friend to do. What might have happened, I wonder, if our guy would have simply responded to the first directive Jesus gave him? And by the way, that directive was super simple if you break it down. Live like you love me, essentially. Live like you love me, like I matter to you, like what you do matters. That's how you multiply your life. If he would have just listened to the coaching available to him and been willing to sacrifice for the kingdom, who knows how things might have turned out. Pretty sure bet the school year would have been saved, not ruined. So don't ruin your school year. Multiply yourself. Listen to those leading you. Sacrifice accordingly. Lots of ways to invest your life. Lots of ways to make a kingdom impact. Let's lean into it together this year. Hey, what's up friends? My name is Nick. So excited to have you join us for this video. And uh, we just wanna let you know that we are a local church in the DFW Dallas-Fort Worth area. And if you're local to here and you're in sixth grade through 12th grade, we would love to invite you to come check us out Wednesday nights in person or Sunday mornings. But if you're not, or if you're just not ready to do that, we also wanna let you know that we love interacting with you here online. So whether it's these long form videos or some of our YouTube shorts or hang out with us over on TikTok or Instagram, we are hoping to provide inspirational, creative, fun, silly content every single day, uh, ultimately all with the aim of helping you take meaningful next steps in your faith to Jesus. If there's any way and anything, any prayer that we can offer for you as a pastor, uh, we would love to invite you to do that. Hit us up in the DMs or shoot us a message some way, somehow. Until next time, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching this video. We're excited to be with you.